uh, COVID-19 pandemic in New York, bombardment in Gaza, innocent people being killed and maimed, the Security Council failing to reach a consensus in four consecutive and the non-aligned movement collectively looking towards you to play a role, a leadership role, to protect innocent civilians and to save and uphold the credibility of the UN system. Mr. President, you did that. We are proud of you. And I'm not saying this as the Foreign Minister of Pakistan. I speak on behalf of OIC, and my country is one of the founding members of OIC. So we are thankful to you for the leadership that you provided. When the President <coughs> decided to convene this special session, he was of the view that we'll start at 10 and we'll close at 1. He had no idea what was waiting. 103 registrations came, and he realized this. So he extended the session, and there was a two-day session. But the significance of this special session was that while in the midst of the debate, when we were meeting in the uh, trusteeship hall, the news came in of a ceasefire. And the objective that has taken me and other foreign ministers to New York, ladies and gentlemen, was achieved. And the idea was cessation of facilities. And thanks to your intervention and your leadership, we achieved that. And another act. <laughs> the president, he sets new precedents and makes a presidential statement. Normally they don't, but you did. Normally there's no podium set up by the UN for foreign ministers like myself to go and address the press at the UN, uh, at, the, at the General Assembly. He set a new president, and I was the first foreign minister to avail that opportunity. Thank you for doing so. I also <coughs> had the pleasure of meeting, uh, besides the president, the Secretary General of the UN. He also made an opening statement uh, on this. Uh, 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 what we expect, Mr. President, from you and the Secretary General is to continue to play that leadership role and initiate the peace process. What we've achieved is the first milestone. But what we need and the nation and, and the Ummah is looking up to is a, a revival of the peace process. Because this is a simmering issue. The fire has not yet been fully extinguished. Please play your role to extinguish the fires. And the only way this of peaceful coexistence and a two-state solution in accordance with the UN Security Council resolutions and to ensure play your role to ensure that timely humanitarian assistance is provided to the Palestinians uh, and those affected in, in this, uh, under this uh, aggression. I intend to get in touch with the Egyptian foreign minister, and I also want to uh, acknowledge the constructive role played by Egypt the leadership, President Sisi, and 
Yesterday, last night, Prime Minister Imran Khan had a very good conversation with President Sisi Zahid. I had the opportunity of hosting uh, the President, but taking advantage of his presence in Islamabad, I briefed the President on the dire situation in the Indian-occupied Jammu and Kashmir. And I drew his attention and the attention of the Secretary General of the similarities between the Palestinian situation and the Kashmir, Jammu and Kashmir situation. What are they talking about? Self-determination. What are the Palestinians demanding? Protect us from demographic restructuring. What are they saying? Human rights. Innocent people are being killed. Help us, protect us. Electricity, water supplies have been affected. Hospitals have been bombed. Red Cross has been targeted. So play, play your role and protect us. What are people in Jammu and Kashmir saying? Palestinians are saying, Security Council, we are on the agenda. We are an agenda item for over seven decades. The President, what are the Kashmiris saying? We are on the agenda of the Security Council for over seven decades. Pay attention. These are international obligations. UN must play that role of responsibility, evolving situation in Afghanistan, and the role Pakistan has played in facilitating the peace process and pushing the reconciliation process forward. I briefed him on a very useful trilateral meeting between Pakistan Afghanistan and Turkey uh, that was convened in Istanbul and Pakistan is supportive of the Istanbul process and the international conference that should, in my view, take place at the earliest in Istanbul. We will do whatever we can. When I met the Secretary General, he said there is a paradigm shift. He said that today the international community is looking at Pakistan not as part of the problem. The international community is looking at Pakistan as part of the solution. And that is the dramatic shift that has taken place in the last, uh, I would say, uh, couple of years. And I must give credit to the leadership of Prime Minister Imran Khan for that. I also briefed him on Pakistan's point of view on the UN reform and the security, the initiative of the Prime Minister for debt restructuring, suspension of uh, debt to enable the develop, developing world to have resources to invest in strengthening their fragile uh, healthcare structure. Mr. President, Thank you. Thank you for your time. And uh, we always look forward uh, to your coming to Pakistan. Uh, you are a friend of Pakistan. And in our humble way, today, after uh, this function, in an investiture ceremony, we will be acknowledging that and recognizing your services and the services of the UN system. Thank you, sir. And may I now request the Honorable President of the General Assembly. Uh, for the kind words. Uh, also, representing uh, Pakistan in the world in a very a good way. You are a well-known figure in the world uh, platform. And I'm a witness that uh, 
in this last meeting for Palestine, your leadership was uh, very much important. We started with a dinner before the meeting, and the, you have invited the ministers to a meeting. And I think that was the crucial point and uh, where a decisive uh, mood among ministers was established. And so the meeting really went smoothly and to the point and with a success. And I appreciate your leadership in that respect. In this, we captured the momentum. We captured the eye of the storm. And when, when the political structure is ready for something, nothing can stop it. it. The wave of the politics can solve every problem. Here, if the ministers didn't come to New York and co connected virtually, we wouldn't have got the result. But everybody saw the ministers. One flew 40 hours, one flew 30 hours, one flew 20 hours. They all took the burden to come there, and this is politics and which is for the result. On my behalf, as the president of the General Assembly, I'm, an, I'm impartial. I, I have a, a duty to be impartial. But of course, impartiality can be defined also. For a case like Palestine, I don't think any PGA can, can stay impartial. Just, and that's, I think, impartiality. So uh, I think the constitution in the Palestinian issue is uh, a swift return to negotiations, as the minister also mentioned, with the goal of ending occupation, addressing all f the, the final status, including the status of Jerusalem, and achieving two independent, sovereign, viable states, Israel and Palestine, living side by side in peace and security, and mutual recognition within recognized borders on the basis of pre-1967 lines with Jerusalem as the capital of both states. I started, started saying that this is the Constitution. The first step was this meeting. Ceasefire was the result. It cannot be the end. So from here, we must use this political wind to also continue uh, using our strength in the General Assembly to force the Security Council and also to force the Secretary General, which has an obligation to also look to the Security Council's uh, success stories and the General Assembly's success stories. If there is one success story, it's enough. If there's two success stories, it's even better than enough. So here, there, uh, I think we have a lot to do, but we also have a uh, big room for maneuver. Minister uh, mentioned uh, and also compared that this is the case. But unfortunately, the Palestinian issue has more wind behind it, polit political wind behind it. And the Jammu and Kashmir issue doesn't have the same uh, enlarged political wind behind it. So I think it is uh, the duty, uh, especially uh, Pakistan, to bring this to the uh, United Nations platform more strongly. And uh, the PGA only needs uh, an application from uh, a group of countries. And it, is, it, it can be held as a meeting there. But of course, uh, as an impartial uh, president of the General Assembly, I must also reiterate that the United Nations solutions India and Pakistan's Simla Agreement on 1972, which states that the final status of Jammu and Kashmir is to be settled by peaceful means in accordance with the UN Charter. And this is, I think, very important that we must all remember. I think uh, uh, both parties, all parties, must refrain from taking steps that could affect the status of Jammu and Kashmir. This is. Uh, I think the most very important part of, uh, of the, uh, how we look at the, the case. Of course, co concerning Afghanistan, as I mentioned in the meeting today, there are 
Many countries, from their perspective, it is true. But some countries are more important. Pakistan is important. Afghanistan is important. Afghanistan, if we can solve the Afghanistan issue, it cannot be limited to Afghanistan. It will, it will have a regional effect. It will have a worldwide effect. So I think what Pakistan is doing, together with Turkey and, the, and Afghanistan, is very important. If we don't do it now, then when we come back at a later stage, we will find a different picture. It will be more complicated, more difficult to solve. In diplomacy, in politics, if it's always like that. If you miss an opportunity and you decide to come back later, you will find that it is looking different. So I think it is timely, and we appreciate it. Of course, uh, uh, Pakistan is my second home, in a way. Uh, I think no, 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 uh, no, not everybody in the world can understand why Pakistan loves Turkey and Turkey loves Pakistan. This is not something economic or uh, built on uh, financial uh, reasons. It's from the heart. It, it just came out. And we lived for decades like that. So as, as a president from Turkey, I have an obligation. I thought I had an obligation to come before taking office and also while I'm the president to visit this beautiful country and I just, uh, my mask is today uh, green and my tie is green just to, uh, I, I shouldn't let that uh, go un unrecognized for tonight's uh, ceremony, which uh, I, will, uh, uh, I will accept it uh, on behalf of the United Nations. And uh, it, is, uh, it is showing that uh, United Nations and Pakistan uh, are working together. Pakistan is honoring the United Nations. And through the President of the General Assembly, I think uh, it's, a, it's a very important message that will be given. And it will be an honor which I will carry throughout my life. I, I thank the government and also the uh, President for uh, choosing me uh, for that honor. Of course, the Prime Minister's uh, 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 charisma important for Pakistan. I think uh, what he's doing with, uh, with the tree plantation programs, putting into uh, effect the uh, difficulties f countries are facing vis-a-vis -vis the uh, debt, uh, debt issues, and also dealing with COVID in this country comparatively much better than many other countries is remarkable. remarkable. And I think reaching 10 billion trees in uh, s some years' time is a very ambitious looking but very correct project. Why Islamabad is so green and why Islamabad is affecting, impressing everybody coming here is because these type of decisions are taken. And a great job there. And many of these issues are dealt in the ECOSOC platform. And he has uh, finalized or finalizing his tenure with a lot of important issues. And one is this one. I think the problem is for some countries not debt uh, postponement, but debt elimination completely. If, if a country cannot pay, what's the use of postponing it? So, we will have an LDC, LLDC SIDS conference uh, with the ECOSOC president uh, before, uh, before the summer. We will have for one for youth, one for the middle income countries. So these are all, I think, and we will be very happy to see Minister yourself or the Prime Minister coming to New York to honor us and give some political uh, perspective to, the, uh, to these important issues. Yourself and to, to Pakistan. As a whole. Long live Pakistan. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. President. We can now take some questions. I would request if you could kindly introduce yourself to the news outlet and also indicate whom your question is addressed to. Adil Bish. My name is Adil Bashir and representing Rose News Network. I have a question from Mr. President, UNGA. Uh, High Excellency Bolkan Bosker. How does UNC 
how does UN see the Kashmir dispute in line with relevant UN resolutions? Sorry. How does UN see the Kashmir dispute in line with relevant UN resolutions? Well, I think I explained the UN position in that respect. And uh, uh, I think what I have said is very clear. Uh, so uh, as an impartial president of the General Assembly, wait until I come back after the 15th of September. Of the dignitaries. Uh, first to the uh, Foreign Minister. Sir, no doubt Israel has uh, committed brazen human rights violation and Mr. Nathan Yahu stands an established uh, war criminal. Does Pakistan as well as Turkey uh, intend to uh, approach the International Court of Justice? Thank you. Uh, to begin with, let me draw your attention to uh, a very important meeting taking place in Geneva right now, the Human Rights Council. Pakistan and Pakistan's ambassador to Geneva, Ambassador Khalil Hashmi, which will discuss human rights violations, violation of international law, and war crimes, and genocide, ethnic cleansing, all this would be under discussion and under debate. I am confident that Western democracies that believe in human rights will stand up and be counted. And don't just tell us what human rights are. They should actually take concrete steps today. And one of the concrete steps can be to draw the attention of ICC on the human rights violations and the war crimes that are taking place uh, in, in, in Gaza and Muslims, Christians. Manazir, you are in Islamabad, where Wazir Khaja Shah Mahmood Qureshi and the Akwami Mutaida General Assembly are going to be a news conference from the Mushtarqa. And with this, the headquarters of the Bolius is now. After this, we will be here with the headlines.